Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Q4 and FY18 conference call of Prime Focus Limited. Today on the call from Prime Focus we have Mr. Namit Malhotra, Executive Chairman and Group CEO, Mr. Ramki, Managing Director, Prime Focus Limited and Founder and CEO of Prime Focus Technologies, Mr. Vikas Rathi, CFO of Double Negative and Mr. Nishant Fadia, CFO of Prime Focus Limited. I will now hand over the call to Namit for his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome. I will start the call with uh, some introductory remarks and update you on the creative services business, following which Ramki will walk us through on Prime Focus Technologies and Nishant will take you through the financials. FY18 continues to be a landmark year for us, which has seen strong validation of our work quality and global leadership as we continue to win on our Oscar uh, trajectory. We won our third Oscar in four years, which uh, I believe is not just the first for an Indian company, but for any company in the world at this point, uh, for the best visual effects category uh, for Blade Runner 2049. We also won the BAFTA for best visual effects at the E BAFTA's 2018 award ceremony for Dunkirk and Blade Runner. This continues to showcase our continued delivery of the highest quality work even as we continue to expand our business and grow margins across the world. This year, our strategic focus has been to increase our global resource presence with new key hires as well as relocation of Vikas as the CFO of DNED to London and Ramki to, US, to the US. Total order book of the group continues to grow and has crossed 500 million from 450 last year. Hence, we continue to believe that we will see accelerated growth and profitability in the year to come across all our cylinders firing at the same time uh, in, all, in all the businesses. On our creative services business, we continue to work on some of the biggest Hollywood, Hollywood blockbusters, such as Black Panther, Thor, Blade Runner, Justice League, Transformers, Wonder Woman, Pirates of the Caribbean, among others. Some of our FR19 projects include the highly successful recently launched Avengers Infinity War and Deadpool 2, as well as some of the most highly anticipated movies of 2018 like Mission Impossible, Fallout, etc. Our film animation and content focus, uh, you know, on, on the OTT platforms is continuing to grow at a, at a strong pace. We believe that the OTT initiatives across all the major companies such as Netflix, Amazon, and other new players that we anticipate coming in will not just bolster our, our current line of business, but expand the overall market in, uh, uh, in creating premium content. As, as a starting point for that, we've already executed one of the most successful shows recently for Netflix called Altered Carbon. Uh, our, we believe our order book uh, not just has grown more robust, but uh, we continue to see it uh, adding more and more revenue coming in from the, from the likes of these uh, uh, new, uh, in, new entities that are uh, really spur, spurring a massive uh, growth in, in creation of this content. We also rebranded our international creative services business under one umbrella of DNL, which represents a fully integrated outcome between Prime Focus World and DNL over the last three and a half years of our coming together. And is, uh, uh, in, from all perspectives, believed and considered to be a massive success of how the two companies have worked together in making sure that they can come together and really present uh, a unified offering to our international uh, customer base. On our India FMS businesses, we continue to deliver some of the biggest hits of 2018, like Padmavat, Bagi 2, and Ray, etc. Our pipeline is strong with movies like Thugs of Hindustan, Brahmastra, uh, Robo 2.0, Mani Karnika, uh, just to name a few. The recent success of movies like Padmavat and Bagi 2 is a proof of the growing budget on visual effects and animation in Indian movies, and we are well positioned to leverage this wave. Over to you, Ramki, for an update on the Prime Focus Technologies business. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Namit, and uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, the Prime Focus Technologies revenue has remained stable, um, in our, and our EBITDA margins have continued to sort of improve. Um, most notably, international market contribution, again, has jumped from about 35% uh, 
to about 41% now. And uh, some of the other ratios are annuity mix, uh, product to services mix have all sort of, you know, uh, been maintained uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the zone that they, they've always been in, in, in August well for where we are. Uh, generally, I just wanted to kind of give you a, uh, give you all a perspective. I think it's a good time, uh, you know, uh, like never before in the industry. Uh, Namit alluded to the to the over the top phenomenon with uh, companies like Netflix and others. Uh, they're fundamentally sort of changing the, you know, if you will, the operating fabric of the industry and uh, some of the pre-existing sort of norms that sort of existed in the way business is operated. Uh, clearly, on one side, we're seeing client consolidation. On the other side, very acutely, uh, you know, we, we, we are seeing, you know, uh, transformations that businesses are going through, which require technologies like Clear and which require media services like the ones that Prime Focus Technologies brings to bear. So I think overall, I think we, we see ourselves, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a good place for, uh, for where we are uh, internationally. Um, we closely uh, we closed the year with a strong order book of about 230 million dollars uh, from the 200 odd million dollar levels that we were in fiscal year 17. Uh, most notably, last quarter again we signed a number of new deals, uh, notably with Baidu's, Times OTT, um, Stanford Productions, again one of our first clients in France. Uh, we partnered with Accenture to win a large deal from a telco uh, called Vodacom in South Africa. Uh, and, and, and likewise. So I think we overall, um, you know, did improve on our new client wins, uh, you know, in the fourth quarter. Um, our brand services business, I think, grew, you know, quite nicely um, uh, as well in the last fiscal year uh, with the kind of work that we do for brands like Big Bazaar or Soch or, um, you know, uh, brands like that, um, if you will. Um, essentially, the focus there is, is is in the content marketing space and how you know we do believe that brands become, will are due to become content destinations themselves, and and, and you know and, and the problems that brands or enterprises have today are no different than the sort of problems that core broadcasters or studios have when they are creating and distributing content. Uh, that's kind of really where we actually take our sort of the cusp of creative and technology to to those markets. Uh, particularly on the technology side, uh, um, you know, we, we have now a, a brand new technology in the online video platform space where we enable our sort of customers to sort of, you know, personalize video communications as they deliver mass communications to sort of target it to, to, to individuals in their database. And, of course, we are also sort of very aggressively taking clear to those markets, uh, to the brands and the enterprises market at large. And so I think uh, our play in the brand services uh, you know, would, 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 would continue to become stronger. We're also sort of, you know, the cusp of actually launching some um, um, uh, new solutions to the market on the back of, you know, a brand new or the next generation uh, of Clear, which is now in the hands of customers. Uh, again, pretty interesting considering that all the, you know, we acquired DAX about three and a half years ago. Now all of those DAX functionality is now inside Clear, and, and, and that new product that's in the hands of DAX customers are, you know, the customers that we inherited on the back of the acquisition. So, again, from a timing-wise, we, we think it's uh, very encouraging because the rest of the functionality of media ERP within Clear is now available as an extension to those customers. And so uh, that, that, I think, augurs well for where we are. On the back of this new product, we've launched, a, you know, about five new solutions in the marketplace extending the same product. Uh, by, by actually listening to customers. Most notably, I think the digital lab offering is, is an exciting one. We've partnered with Microsoft Azure there um, and then taking it at an use of, use of the cloud and how it can become really a production hub on the cloud, or we call it a digital lab. Uh, pretty exciting offering on the back of uh, the clear media ERP software. Uh, and, and on the back of the digital transformation opportunities, um, you know, uh, clients are wanting to centralize, just like Netflix and Amazon and others have sort of one operation for the 200, 250 uh, cu countries that they that they cater to. Uh, likewise, the opportunities of centralization for broadcasters is a very good one that we're focused on. Um, to leverage all of these opportunities, Namit did mention, we did make a public announcement early on that I have personally sort of relocated myself to live in the U.S., uh, in, in trying to sort of foray and sort of, you know, stand in front of customers. 
um, and, 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 and also make sure that we're listening to customers in the international markets uh, for us to sort of cater to our, cater our products and services uh, to win more business there. We've also sort of augmented our leadership team by bringing in a very strong global chief security officer uh, in the name of Cesar Sedak. Again, he comes from working with Dis- Disney, Warner, and most recently from PricewaterhouseCoopers on the consulting side. Um, so all of those sort of are all sort of, you know, if you will, uh, necessary investments that we're making uh, to to really sort of leverage the platform that we've created, um, you know, into the future. Um, with that, I, I, I want to sort of hand over to Nishant uh, for him to take you uh, to the financial. Uh, Nishant. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ramsey. Thanks, Samit. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for taking the time to join us today. Uh, our consolidated group revenue for the year uh, stood at 2,292 crores, uh, which is increased about 5.2% over last year. Uh, EBITDA increased about 8.5% to reach about 544 uh, up from 501 last year. Uh, this EBITDA is adjusted for uh, for 58 crores of one-time um, Montreal setup costs, uh, non-cash ESOPs, uh, non-operating FX charges uh, on account of balance sheet translations, uh, some le- one-time legal costs, and some conservative provisions. Coming to uh, on a business-wise uh, performance, uh, the creative services business contributed about 78% to the revenue, uh, while tech services contributed 15%, and the rest came from our India SMS business. Uh, revenue for the year on the creative services business increased about 8% to reach about 180, 1,817 crores, uh, up from 1,688 crores in FY17, while EBITDA margin improved by about 3.3%. Uh, to reach 23.9 from 20.6 last year. Uh, this is largely on the back of increased delivery from our uh, India operating hubs. Uh, tech services reported revenue of 350 crores in FI18 uh, with an EBITDA margin of about 26.5%. The India FMS business continued to do well and remain stable, about 170 crores of revenue uh, and about 38% margin. Uh, coming to finance charges for the year, uh, this includes uh, 33 crores on account of change in a, uh, accounting treatment towards, towards redemption premium on NCD, uh, which earlier were adjusted against net worth in the balance sheet directly are now being passed through the PNL from FI18 onwards. So for the year, that's a 33 crore charge. Uh, finance charges also include a non-cash charge towards fair valuation of derivative instruments of uh, AID and Macquarie at PFW level, which amounts to about 31 crore rupees. Um, ESOP charges, uh, which are non-cash in nature, of course, are 35 crores for the year, and the total balance charge on ESOPs uh, is about 8 crores uh, for the remainder of the ESOPs, uh, out of which 4 crores will be uh, charged off to the PNL in Q1 FY19. Consolidated net debt stood at 1,544 crores, uh, and additionally, company has issued warrants of about 330 crores in our prices to the promoter in January. Uh, out of which the funds are significantly to be used for debt reduction. Uh, before we jump to uh, Q&A, just uh, in conclusion, I think we continue to focus on reducing uh, group debt and leverage, uh, which is certainly aided by the promoter infusion I just spoke about. Uh, the creative services business, uh, again, will focus on margin expansion going forward uh, to further improve margin on the back of our delivery centers out of India. And the tech services business certainly with, uh, like Ramki mentioned, him moving to the U.S. Uh, looks for uh, expansion on revenue from that market itself. Uh, I think uh, with this, I want to jump. Uh, thank you again for taking the time. Uh, and we'll open the line up for questions now. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Kinjal Jagani from MM Savla Consultancy Services. Please go ahead. 
Hi, this is Mulet Savla from uh, MM Savla Consultancy Services. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is to Mr. Namit. Uh, Mr. Namit, as you have guided and uh, uh, the uh, another gentleman from technology also said uh, uh, technology vertical doing well. So as I look at all the projects are doing well, all the verticals are uh, doing well, we have several revenue streams, new streams are coming up like Netflix and all. We have very healthy order book. But still somehow I feel that uh, 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 by and large, I do, are you satisfied with the performance of our company this year? Well, I think it's a good question. I think, uh, you know, as the CEO of any business, you know, performance is never satisfactory. We always look for and strive for more. However, I think, uh, you know, when you take the take the overall uh, perspective of where everything is tracking, I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, we could have done better than we did, but uh, I'm not unhappy either. I don't believe we've uh, underperformed, but I certainly do believe that we could have done better. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you specifically where, uh, you know, this is an inherent, uh, I, let's say it's a risk or a challenge in our business, is that we are, because on the creative services side, we tend to be a large uh, project-centric business. There are times when you will see slips of, uh, you know, work that will happen quarter to quarter. Now, in a financial year-end structure, if that happens between Q1 and Q2 or Q2 and Q3, it's much more uh, balanced because you end up in a more, you still end up at the same place on an annual number basis. I think it's fair to say that this time around, we have had some, uh, revenue uh, transitions from Q4 into Q1 and Q2 next year. And that is why you probably feel, uh, you know, that the performance uh, numbers may have been a little softer than what we would have ideally wanted. So, yeah, so I am not on to my mind, there is no alarm. Boss, because uh, I, I also understand that uh, yeah, if we have to analyze any business, naturally quarter and quarter is uh, too short a period. But uh, even if I look at the quarter's uh, performance, our debt has gone up, debtors have gone up, you know, balance sheet is also uh, uh, giving little uh, scary picture. So I think, I think see, it's, a, it's, it's all about finding where you stand in the cycle. I think, uh, you know, like I said, that we've had some, uh, you know, revenue transitions from Q4 this year into Q1, Q2, which is why you'll see some of these metrics skewed in a certain direction. Okay. Uh, you know, there are times when we receive massive advances in, in uh, like we did last year, which then got spent through the year, and this year around, you know, there's a, so sometimes you get advances ahead of time, sometimes you get paid a little bit below, behind the milestone uh, of delivery. So it's it's literally a little bit of a, I wouldn't call that an absolute target. You know, there are, some of these are moving pieces that can sometimes skew it, look a lot better, or sometimes, not as good depending on when exactly you see it and where you are in the delivery cycle of project. But so we overall, I don't believe that Q1, Q2, little better than uh, uh, last uh, quarter. And uh, what is your uh, view about this company? Where do you want to see this company in a few years down the line? Yeah, I think the aspirational goal has been to, to truly build the largest company in the world in our space. I think we have uh, clearly... Today counted among the top three, four companies. I think we certainly believe that uh, we we want to be the number one player. I think in terms of headcount and expansion, uh, we've uh, certainly demonstrated in the last few years of how we brought on a company like Double Negative uh, back in 2014-15. And where we stand today, if you compare it in that relative trans transformation that has happened, it is massive. So, and what we believe is that the best is only starting only because you know this whole model of running across the global capabilities on the double negative side is mm -hmm. no more than a two-year two -year initiative. And that is where we believe significant amount of growth and uh, leverage still sits in the, in the business model of how we can continue to grow market share and capacity to really create uh, massive uh, operating leverage in our numbers. Good. So just to continue your uh, guidance, uh, the current year uh, technology, in, in our technology vertical also we have taken a lot of initiative and we have uh, relocated re uh, our uh, uh, CEO also there. 
so uh, can we see a, a higher percentage of revenue share of technology in our overall uh, 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 revenue uh, for the uh, next year financial year 90 i think it's absolutely uh, you know something that is it's a fair question i think you know we are committed to making that happen as soon as we can because like i said that is where we can see massive opportunity and upside i would only say that you know while that is the goal and the target and you know we're doing everything to actually make that happen mm-hmm. making a big breakthrough you know is something that i must advise the street to sort of recognize as a as a real inflection point for the company and we are committed 200% to make sure that we we make that happen now whether it happens in fiscal it should have happened in fiscal 18 will it happen in fiscal 19 or beyond frankly anybody's guess is as good we obviously continue to believe that our product delivery is not been stronger our commitment to our uh, customers in terms of leadership and sales force is not uh, lacking and as a company and as a group we certainly recognize that that is uh, where our future growth uh, will come from so you know sorry to give you a long answer but the but the fact is that we are putting all our efforts in making that happen and uh, as soon as we make that breakthrough you know in a bigger way i think you'll see a completely non linear growth uh, trajectory for the company thereafter so uh, you know obviously uh, we want to get there as soon as we can but however i have, i must present caution that it's not something that <laughs> five other companies have been able to do before so with this kind of product offering so you know we are the leader and we have to take on uh, some of the challenges that come with uh, being a pioneer and doing it for the first time okay okay great so i wish you all the very best thank you thank you for uh, this is only my, from my side thank, thank you. you a reminder to the participants to ask a question please press star then 1 The next question is from the line of Avinash Mehta from Rhythm Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. So uh, my question is: So what is the outlook of growth uh, for all the three segments and EBITDA margin targets for FI19? I think on a consolidated basis, uh, you know, we we believe uh, to be conservative. I think we would say that. Uh, we should see a double digit uh, increase in uh, top line and ebitda expansion uh, as we go forward okay sir and sir any more restructuring that may result in one time cost in fn19 no uh, right you know uh, again these are not restructuring cost per se uh, but specific point uh, you are making no not, not expected right now Okay okay thank you sir thank you participants who would like to ask questions please press star then 1 the next question is from the line of mehka oberoy from mk global please go ahead good afternoon uh, prime focus team this is kenin jain from mk and thanks a lot for uh, uh, a very precise update so first of all congratulations for reaching the critical mass and uh, the bulge bracket uh, you know technology uh, company who is rendering services to the media companies i want to understand that on an absolute basis we have to ask some 540 550 crore so from a 3 years perspective uh, what is the ebitda growth and absolute ebitda we are aiming at Uh, can you help us with that broadly if you you know from a 3 to 4 years perspective that would be useful so can i uh, i'm going to let namit give you the outlook uh, please but uh, uh, to give you an absolute number would be kind of difficult what for an aspiring number or a trajectory i mean or a goal post you can say like that i'll certainly let namit talk about what he thinks is possible in the next 3 4 years but please uh, yeah. I, i don't think an absolute number right now would be fair Uh, but certainly namit can talk about trajectory and outlook uh, perfect namit so yes, i think i think see the idea in the next 3 to 4 years with all the initiatives that we put put together over the last 2 3 years of really globalizing our capability in a in a significant way i think uh, i think it from my personal standpoint and from the targets that we Set for ourselves. You know, we would love to cross the thousand crore EBITDA mark in the next uh, few years. That is something that is uh, certainly something that 
is, is an aspirational figure that we uh, firmly believe we should work towards. Uh, so, you know, that that is uh, is currently where we stand uh, in uh, at least laying out the the aspiration for the future. Uh, lastly, on the order book, which is around 260-270 million dollar, uh, how is the outlook? So, you know, keeping in mind the change in the industry trends uh, on the international front, where you see the order book? Because today, I mean, uh, we are on the optimum quartile in terms of all the technology, all the you know requirements for the large studios. So, this 260-270 million dollar order book, where you see on the international front. Keeping Indian context in mind, the way, you know, Indians emulate the overseas trend, do you think a, a big trend can also emerge on the India front, which can, uh, you know, give you a far larger business on India front also from a three to four years view? Certainly. I think let me take the second part of the question first. I think the, the fact that the Indian uh, trajectory for content and premium content is beginning to become more and more of a reality, you know, you've got... In the success of films like Bahubali last year, you can see there are a, there are multiple projects that are in either already in production or uh, or are looking to be made. Films like Brahmastra, uh, Robo 2, uh, even there is an announcement of Krish 4. You know, there are massive projects out there which are looking for uh, really building up towards uh, and from and following the track of very very successful. Uh, con- you know, uh, ho- Hollywood content that is that is played out uh, theatrically and now on OTT also. So we are seeing the similar trend uh, starting to develop uh, in India, and we believe uh, we are in a great position to serve that opportunity. The other side is that the development of the order book, you know, it's an important perspective for me to draw to the to the to the people on the call. But you know, over the last three years since we did the merger with Double Negative. I think what we focus as a company is not just to sco- to increase order book by increasing our uh, capacity in the western uh, part of the world. We try to time the the expansion of our business <clears throat> in line with how we grow in the west and how we grow our capacity in India in such a way that we are really positioning ourselves for that margin expansion. Because just increasing revenue, like it's like me telling you that if I increase my headcount in London from thousand to two thousand people. Technically, our revenue in, you know, from a London standpoint could double as a result of that. But that would not have the same impact uh, uh, in our uh, uh, bottom line. So, you know, we've got to manage the, the expansion of our order book and the expansion of capacity in line with how we believe we're going to do justice to our uh, financial uh, metrics as well, which would increase, which would involve expansion of margin and long-term uh, sustainability growth uh, for the company. So it's not uh, just tracking revenue growth for the sake of revenue growth. It's really focusing hard on making sure that the, the balancing act between the West and the East is done in such a way that we, can, as we grow capacity in the West, we're also growing uh, significantly more capacity in the East to drop uh, more and more margin. And that is really the, uh, the, the, the right way in my mind to build the company into a place where over a period of time this sustainability becomes a very natural uh, course and reality that frankly will also then distinguish us from all our competitive landscape where we will have hopefully achieved a level of scale and a level of margin profile that is unique to our uh, industry. Perfect. I think thanks a lot for the understanding imparted and it answers my question. Thanks. Thank you. Participants who would like to ask questions, please press star, then 1. The next question is from the line of Ankit Chaudhary from Aquarius. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. Uh, how is it here? Sir, I have a few bookkeeping questions. Um, excuse sir, me, this sir? is the operator. Mr. Chaudhary may be requested to use the handset. Please, your voice is echoing a bit. Uh, hello? Uh, is it uh, more audible now? Uh, it is audible, but there is a slight echo coming. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, is it audible now? Uh, yes, sir. You may go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, could you tell me what was the overall KPEX done in FI18 and what would be the outlook for KPEX for FI19? Sure. Uh, the FI18 uh, total K- KPEX is about 290 crores. Uh, and uh, I think outlook going forward 
for this year we have it at about 200 crores uh large part of this capex for fy18 uh, has happened on the creative services business about 209 crores of it and uh, that's you know largely to to you know we spoke earlier about uh, we set up facilities and increase in, increase the uh, capacity uh, in montreal and chennai largely uh, so owing to that uh, it's a larger capex number this year So, so this expansion in Montreal and Chennai is it completely over? So there wouldn't be any one-off uh, expansion expenses going ahead. I think that is taken care of for the most part. Uh, so we are, we, are, we are through with those uh, facilities. Those facilities are both uh, online and operational now. Okay, sure. Uh, and so, uh, what would be our operating cash flow that we have made in FY18? Sorry, say that again. Uh, so, what would be the operating, operating cash flow? Operating cash flow that we have made in FY18. So, it's it's after uh, working capital, it's about 180 crores uh, of operating cash flow. Okay, so uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who would like to ask questions, please press star then one. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nishant for closing comments. Uh, thank you once again, uh, everybody, for joining today. Uh, if you have any more follow-up questions, uh, please reach out to us, and we'll be happy to address that to the best we can. Uh, thanks once again, everybody, for joining.